Welcome to State Fair Food. We're doing Wisconsin cream puffs. I made the cream puffs yesterday, thank goodness. The humidity was lower and they worked really well. Yesterday they were crispy. Today they're a little soft, but they will be wonderful. We will fill them with whipped cream for you. We're also doing turkey to go sandwiches, which is Minnesota State Fair since um, 1958. They've served turkey to go on a bun because Minnesota is the largest producer of turkeys in the United States. And on top of the turkey on the bun, Sheboygan hard rolls, we have cranberry relish and brie cheese. I called the Minnesota State Fair and they said they no longer serve the cranberries and cheese, but we're going to have it. <laughs> North Dakota, popcorn salad. And that popcorn salad, since 1910, in 1910, their popcorn salad was banana, leaf lettuce, summertime, mayonnaise, and popcorn. We're going to expand that. And I thought, how odd, popcorn salad, North Dakota. Pick and Save has it in their deli now. <laughs> As I say, I will make some cream puff batter in front of you. Now we have here today, Elaine Kraus, County Administrator. Mm -hmm. Tell us something about Sheboygan County and you. Oh, excellent. I have um, been the County Administrator since February. February. I've been working for the county for over 11 years. And growing up, I was in 4-H and went to the fair every year and know all of the food stands very well. <laughs> so I am honored to be here today for Fair Food Day. And of course, to my eyes, she looks like she's 22 years yeah. old. <laughs> <laughs> Much older than that. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> of course. And our wonderful volunteers, Ann Craft and her sister Janet Ray and Jar doing the tables. Wonderful Peg Watson. Thank you, Peg. You're always here. And thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. It could not be done alone. And my friend Kathy Tarpey, who lived in Sheboygan a long time ago, lives in, lives close to Madison now. She and I were in the catering together. She was always my sous chef for many years. We, the mansions and the beautiful houses, we went in the back door, we cooked, we left out from the back door. And you have a story that I had forgotten. I'll stand close to you so they can hear it on the microphone. Oh, I can, I can project. Can you hear me in the back? Can you hear me in the She's back? She's a mother of 10. Yeah. Oh, wow. um, Marilyn had always said to any of us, some of you have heard this story before, and my children have heard it several times. Um, some of you have, Marilyn always said, I will take responsibility for anything that happens. If we break a wine glass, if we, you know, drop something, I, it's, I will take responsibility for it, and I will own up to it. So one night at the end of the meal, a man came to the door of the kitchen, stern looking, big fellow, said, who's responsible for this meal? So of course, Marilyn stepped forward and said, I am. And he said, can I marry you? <laughs> forgotten that. <laughs> and then of course the time we did table side flaming coffee, I think I may have told you. And the gentleman who was hosting it said, Marilyn, this coffee tastes a little salty. And sure enough, I had used salt instead of sugar. Oh, oh yes. Yep. I right. had a jar filled with a granulated substance. <laughs> White. And didn't, and it was not marked. <laughs> and I did not taste it. 
Okay. The brat nachos. I'm going to. Oh, they're done. Good. I'm going to quickly demonstrate the brat nachos. On a. We'll put them right here. On this little tray, I'm putting the rye crackers and then some bulk bratwurst that I've cooked. And of course, making the uh, nachos on a big tray is usually the way it's done. But you know, if we did that here, we would not be able to get those all apart. So your servings are in little cupcake papers. Okay, and cheese, and of course, however much cheese you like. And of course the onions that I don't have, and then the squeezed sauerkraut. Uh, I had not thought of sauerkraut on top, but I was at a committee meeting and I was telling Craig Stewart, who's going to be the sous chef in October, who's the veterans uh, representative. I said, uh, I'm going to, I told him about the brat nachos, and then he said, there should be sauerkraut on top. I said, absolutely. I just dreamed this up. And then, and some mustard, horseradish, and mayo. So you put it together however you want. I'll put it in this little oven. Kathy, can you turn that on and then kind of watch it? And I understand on YouTube there's all sorts of brat nachos. Well, I had just dreamed it up. Sure, right. I would think the rye crackers would also work. Okay, so come on up and get your hors d'oeuvre, which is the brat nachos. I was talking with my husband this week, and as I say, I talk to him quite regularly. <laughs> now that he is retired, he wants to sit and talk a lot. <laughs> anyway, when he was a young man, before I had married him, when we lived in Dallas, and he lived in an apartment across the street from me, he, s he went to the doctor because he had such athlete's foot. And the podiatrist told him, Lee, not only do you have athlete's foot, you have scurvy and malnutrition. Because, and then I said to Lee, oh my goodness. He said, well, we, we guys went to work, we came home and ate bologna sandwiches and drank beer, and that was it. <laughs> I said, oh my goodness. And he said, if I hadn't married you, Marilyn, I know I would not be still alive, because I would have been doing all those foolish things for many more years. Okay, cream puffs. On your cream puff recipe, I think it says, Elaine, what does it say on the cream puff recipe? Oh, here, tell me what it says. A half cup butter, yep, half which cup is butter. eight cups, eight tablespoons. I tried a new recipe. Use six tablespoons instead of eight. And as I say, I made cream puffs yesterday and the dry humidity helped a lot. Cream puffs are ideally made in winter time. Summer is difficult. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're going to put eggs in this and you know the egg trick, but of course, Scott already told Elaine. <laughs> Is it? Okay. I do need them back, so <laughs> we'll find them. Because I need to do that at every class. Next is one cup water. One cup water, mm -hmm. thank you. And heat that to boiling. Yep, heat to boiling. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A pinch of sugar, a pinch of salt, which I did not bring. We'll let that, we'll see. Do you want the salt? Oh, this is Oh, thank you, thank you. Start a fire here in the... You're going to have to have the fire chief for one of your next guests. She had that already. Yeah. Oh, yes? I had Vernon Koch, yes. Oh, did you? And okay. then two firemen came. Yes, yes. not salt. I, it, it doesn't make any difference. Okay. It doesn't. It adds flavor. It doesn't make any difference in the rising. Okay. 
So while that is coming to a boil in five minutes, in 30 minutes, who knows? <laughs> we'll go to the um, North Dakota popcorn salad. All right, Elaine. If you will just mm -hmm. put into this pan all of these things. All together? Yep. Okay. What's the first one? What's the first thing on the list for the popcorn salad? Celery, all right. And then next, water chestnuts. All right. Carrots. And I grated them myself. A person can buy those little grated ones, but they're kind of tough and dry. And what's next after the carrots? Cheese. Cheese. Oh, we don't have any. Yeah, one of those containers in the refrigerator that has cheese in it. Okay, regular cheese? Yep, cheese, cheese, right. <laughs> and green onion. green onion, all right. Yep. Do you want the full jar? Yep, the whole jar, oh, you bet. Carefully measured. You use what you have in your house. Well, you know, when you make a green salad, mm -hmm. you put into it whatever you happen to have in the refrigerator. Black yes. too? Yes, yep. yep. And then I mix together the vinegar and mayonnaise and a little black pepper. And I think this will taste better than simply leaf lettuce, banana, mayonnaise, and popcorn. Now, the trick is the popcorn is added at the last minute. So it doesn't get soggy. Is it well, let's see, does it have cheese? <laughs> sure enough. And I do grate the cheese too. We can use the grate pre-grated, but you are cooks, you know mm -hmm. that tends to be a little dry. And it has to be in order to stay separated. I have Wisconsin Colby and um, Wisconsin Cheddar. It is the Wisconsin State Fair. A bit more? Isn't this Minnesota? Do you want a bit? This is North Dakota, oh, North Dakota. but I'm still using. <laughs> no, uh, uh we're fine, Kathy. Nope, and that's boiling. That is uh -huh. our. North Dakota State Fair, except for the popcorn, mm -hmm. we will add at the end. I wonder if Pick and Save adds the popcorn Oops. with each serving or if it has, I don't know, I don't know. Okay. How's that look? The water and the butter are boiling. I will add a cup of, okay. Okay, Elaine, stir like mad. Okay. No, it'll all be done yeah, in the later. kitchen. Yeah, we do that later. Yeah. I'm gonna just hold it up for a moment. Mm -hmm. You can see that it's starting to come together. And one recipe did say to use a rubber, no, no, a wooden flat spatula. And it does work better than the rubber one. Who knows like why? But for this, it does work the best. Can you turn that down? Yep. I think it's burning. Okay. Now, we'll turn this off. Keep stirring. That's all right. Now, I'm going to put into that let me see, we don't have another cut, another, if we put this on this table, it's going to right. melt the tablecloth. What do we have? A oh, towel? I know, my metal tray. Okay. 
thoroughly and put it on there. And we'll pull that plug. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, one egg, just leave it. And stir like mad again, one egg at a time. And you, we can do it the easy way. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, the other way. Let me get that plugged in just as soon as I'm done stirring. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, you have three more <laughs> eggs to go. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay. Another one of your pranks? <laughs> no, 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 that was completely. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Are you done with your eggs? No, I need three more. Okay. okay. I was just getting them on. I'm low. Okay, here, I'll let you take oh this. Yeah. Okay. Turn it off. That is a noisy mixer, my goodness. Another one. Go for it. One at a time. Okay. It, off for a second. it has to be completely integrated. It doesn't have to be. It works best if that egg is completely integrated before the next egg goes in. Keep mixing? Yep. Okay, turn it off for a second. Okay, class, did I put in three eggs or four? Four. four. Did I? Okay, yep. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And then that can be unplugged and put in the back behind okay. us. Now, I remembered the tip. I forgot the piping bag at home. <laughs> so, we improvise. Will, yep, mm -hmm. we'll use a plastic bag. I need some scissors for my tool chest. Oh my. Yep, that's fine. And of course, this with this nice fold on the bottom is good for when you're going to put food in it. It's not so good when you're going to use it for a piping bag. You know it's going to pop through. You know it is. <laughs> Although, you can do these just with a spoon. But let's just see how long it takes for this baby to pop through. <laughs> I'm gonna leave a little here. And that tray. didn't take very long at all. <laughs> so we can just do this. And of course the cream puffs, and take the knife and cut that off for me. Yep, thank you. And you can make big cream puffs, you can make medium or oh, large. you're making them really big. That's all right. Oh. This is demo. Mm -hmm. The ones we're eating are already completed.
<laughs> Any question? <laughs> They're perfect. They're yeah. perfect. <laughs> These will go into the oven according to the directions. And that does work pretty well. And they should be golden brown, better on the darker side than the light side. Okay. <laughs> and of course, little cream puffs, big cream puffs, cream puffs in which you put creamed peas and tuna, any kind of, and of course the other word for that dough is pate chou, chou pastry, which you can make into cream puffs, or if you use the fancy word, you make the pate chou into profiteroles. All the same thing. Oh. All the same thing. <laughs> Just like Just, bechamel is white sauce. You're impressing us with all these words that we can't uh, pronounce or spell. <laughs> and, you, and you don't have to. It really, there are no tests in your own kitchen. <laughs> the, the, the tester does not arrive on your door. Good. What's next? Okay, we'll go to this turkey. Remember a number of months ago, we had turkey sandwiches for something. And I had purchased a lot more turkey than we needed. <laughs> so I looked up a variety of state fair foods in Minnesota, the turkey to go sandwich. So we have here the diced turkey. It was probably all breast meat. But if you use all of your turkey and kind of shred it together, like you do pulled pork or pulled beef, that works wonderfully well also. This is diced. Cranberry sauce. I did cranberry relish. The cranberries, the sugar, more sugar than you possibly can imagine, mm -hmm. and the raw orange. But then I added a jar, couple jars of the whole berry, cranberry from the grocery store. There was only one bag of frozen cranberries in the whole store. But, and then when I brought this in yesterday, coming in the front door, I dropped it on the cement. <laughs> and and scooped it back in. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and quite a lot of it, it was on the sidewalk. <laughs> but I did save this. <laughs> and so Jane hosed it down. Mm -hmm. But if people saw that, who knows what they thought. <laughs> But you know that's what cooking really is. Lots of boo-boos, lots of errors, lots of tasting, and still lots of mistakes. All right, have I covered everything? Minnesota, the turkey to go, they started in 1958. The popcorn salad was 1910. And cream puffs in Wisconsin, let's see. They started selling the cream puffs in 1924. That's even longer ago than my birthday. <laughs> okay, let us start with I'm going to cut this open. That'll be a lot easier to get mm -hmm. to. Marilyn, what's your provider for hard rolls? This came from Johnston. Johnston. Because uh, Marianne Pearl, P E R L, mm -hmm. who does our library, is of the Johnston family. Oh, okay. Yes. So when we had these for the brat fry, yep. Johnston Bakery donated all of them. Oh, awesome. That is very nice. Yes. Yes. And of course, it's still the Johnston family, and all the sisters and brothers still run it. Marianne tells the story of when she was a little girl, six children, eight children, however much it was, and her dad put a swing set in their living room. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's nice. That dad liked his children. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they all still get along marvelously well. <laughs> Do I have another story about anything? I did bring 
from the Sun, I think, the Sheboygan County Fair information, which mm -hmm. is finished. Mm -hmm. Did you get to the fair? I did, I did. And, and did you say that you used to show things at the fair? I did not show animals. Well, I take that back. I had my dog. I had a Border Collie growing up, and I had him in obedience and agility oh. classes. But I also brought other uh, projects through 4-H, so arts and crafts. Um, my mom was the leader for our uh, cooking group in our 4-H club, so we had a lot of cooking classes in my kitchen growing up. So. That's it's wonderful nice. to be here and doing this with you. That's nice. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. That's very nice. And I brought another. Would you bring that calendar to me, Peg? Don't trip on me. I took the calendars down from the basement toilet area, <laughs> and there's and I and I just keep putting them up year after year. This is 2014, and this gal. Scott knows her, now she's, you know, that was 2014. Her mother was, what was she, Scott? Miss? Allison Dairy oh. Land. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. And now, of course, she's old enough to be Allison Dairy Land. Mm -hmm. We have the white milk cartons, the chocolate milk cartons. Did you get the chocolate milk also? They're all yeah, gone. They're gone. Right. Oh, big okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and then some strawberry milk. I had asked Piggly Wiggly to get that for me. They forgot to order it. So I thought, oh, what will I do? Mm -hmm. What will I do on Wednesday? I called the school nutritionist, left a message. I thought, well, that's the end of that. She called me back. She said, we'll provide the milk for free. Oh. Isn't that nice? Isn't that wonderful? I did buy the strawberry, but she provided all of the chocolate milk and all of the white milk. And of course, if you're not a milk drinker, white or uh, there is water there to also. And I noticed all of the milk that she provided is 1% and 2%. So that's what they provide for the students. And of course, we grew up drinking. Well, actually, we separated the cream off the top of the bottle, right, to whip and then drank the rest. Yeah, right. Okay, let's start on our sandwiches. Okay.